Letting you in. Take a look at you and start to lose my balance. What am I falling into? This feels like something new. I see a lot of views, but they were nothing like this. The way you do what you do, I think you're something brand new. Welcome to Sunny Boat Nation. In today's video, we're going to be talking about everything you need to know about EVA foam turf. If you want to buy it from us, install it yourself. We're going to talk all about that as well as our two locations and all the services that we offer for custom EVA foam turf. Check it out. All right, now we're going to talk to you guys about the DIY way of laying down EVA foam. If you go to tvnation.net, you're going to see that we have three different types of EVA foam. You have C-Deck, which at the filming of this video is completely sold out. You have OrthoDeck, and you have HydroTurf. There's really not much difference between all three of those products. C-Deck is kind of like Yeti. It's just a more popular name for this stuff. They're probably the first guys to come out with it. The next option is usually OrthoDeck, and then our most popular option is HydroTurf Cut Groove, which we'll talk about the grooves here in a second. Each brand has a different size sheet that they come in, so make sure to check the listing as to what size sheet you're getting for that actual product. And in some instances, like with HydroTurf, the color dictates the sheet size, mainly because these crazy camo colors are usually for a jet ski uh, instead of a boat, so the sheets are a little bit smaller. We cannot get these sheets in any different sizes. The ones that are available on the site are what they come in. Even when you CNC route these things, they cut them from the same sheet size. So. I, I can't get you a 30 foot roll of this, I'm sorry. We have a sheet of HydroTurf here, so we're gonna use that as our example. There are three or four different uh, patterns that you can get on this EVA foam. You can do the flat brushed, which is brushed look without any grooves cut into it. Then you have a cut groove option, which about every quarter of an inch, there's a cut groove into there. You can also do the two inch T cut option, which does a routed line every two inches. And you can also do a diamond cut pattern, which we use probably the least of, but uh, it's also available. This brushed option is a very common one for the self-routing, like Mike does in his videos. It's got a bottom layer that's black and a top layer that's a different color. We also use this a lot on the interior of compartments. The camo patterns from HydroTurf are literally only one color. You cannot get a, a second color underneath this camo pattern. So this stuff is not really a good candidate for uh, DIY self-routing. The two inch teak cut obviously has a color below the top color, so you could in theory route this if you wanted to just like Mike does in his videos. Regardless of what sheet color you go with, installation wise there's a few things you need to do first. Most of the time you're going to have two different ends on the short side. You're going to have a straight cut side and then you're going to have another side that has a few frayed ends on it. This turf is directional, kind of like carpet, especially when you do just like a single color. The prettiest cut side is usually the side that's going towards the bow, and the little frayed back side is usually the back. That way we keep all the sheets straight when we're laying this out. The camo patterns cover up and hide imperfections a lot better and easier than your flat brushed or your two inch teak cut stuff. The pattern just seems to break up uh, any lines. The grays, your uh, mochas, your blacks, make sure that they're all going the same way. Usually you can do that better out in the sunlight. Okay, so now that we're straight on your short sides, let's talk about the long side of the sheet. You're gonna notice that these are square, but they're gonna not look and lay square. Sometimes the cut is not exactly even with the grooves on both sides of the sheet. So that's kind of the first thing you need to do once you pull these things out of the box. Make your first cut on a identical line depending on which turf you're using. So with the HydroTurf cut groove option, we usually cut that line at the very lowest point in that groove. And this will help with your foot nicking the side of any of this after installation and pulling up the sheet. You know, it's at that lowest spot so nothing can really grab a hold of it. Same with the two inch teak cut stuff. We do that cut right in the middle of that lowest router line. This is gonna give you a good uh, starting point when you have to add on another sheet to your decking or on your compartments or wherever you're gonna install this. After you squared up the sheet, the first piece that you wanna lay down is completely smack dab center all the way forward in your front deck. That way you're using that one full sheet for the majority of 
your application. Then you can use another sheet to kind of break apart to fill in the sides. Also, that leaves your high traffic area on your deck all on one sheet instead of down through a line. Cutting this stuff, we use a bunch of different uh, razor blades, different sizes, they'll do different things for you. I like the 18 millimeter blade the best. It is the, you know, it's a little bit thicker, it's stronger, it helps me get that full contact of the blade down to the deck and really pull through on it and give me one nice clean cut. We also use a smaller nine mil blade to get around the really tough corners where you need a little bit more bend inside that blade. But one thing to remember about these blades is you're gonna need a lot of them. And I mean a lot. If you make one cut with this and then got break off the corner, you're doing it right. So when you're cutting this stuff out and you're using your razor blades, any type of sawing motion is going to show up in your turf in the final product. And there is no getting that out. There's no like cutting around it and trying to make it look straight. It just comes out looking like crap. For example, we either break the blade apart or replace the blade after cutting out like one hatch even because what happens is this gums up with the adhesive backing and it doesn't allow you to keep this blade straight up and down at a 90 and do one solid pull. It likes to kind of start grabbing and catching where you start getting that sawing motion in the blade and then it doesn't look very good in the end. That also reminds me, always buy your sheets with adhesive backing. We're not trying to steal money from you. The 3M adhesive backing that comes on the back of these sheets is very, very high quality. We have yet to find anything that will work as well as this adhesive backing does that comes on the sheet. And any of those other products makes the installation process a lot harder. Thickness. Generally speaking, the thickness on all of these sheets is usually around a quarter inch. This EVA foam does not like being wrapped around corners or 90 degree edges. So for a lid, all you're doing is pasting the stuff on the top. If you're coming down to the top of your deck and down into your cockpit area, we suggest laying this down on top, making a cut on the corner, and laying the other piece vertically up and then making your cut. If you do wrap it around the corner, it does work, but in the long run, that becomes a lift point for this stuff and it distorts and gets air bubbles behind the cut groove or whatever groove pattern is cut into this. So if you can stay away from that, I would highly recommend doing so. This stuff will distort once you pull the 3M adhesive backing off the back. However, it, the 3M adhesive is pressure sensitive. So as long as you don't fully press down this stuff, if you end up messing up somewhere or need to lift the sheet back up and recenter everything, you are able to do so. Just make sure you're not applying any pressure and make sure as you're lifting it that you're not really pulling and stretching this sheet out because that will distort the sheet as well. Once you're done applying everything, it is a good idea to go over all of it with a roller. We use a cooking roller just to apply all that pressure to the 3M adhesive backing to make sure everything's stuck down very well and nicely. All right, so no matter which EVA option you go with, whether it's the CNC routed or the DIY version, this stuff cleans the same way. When it comes to cleaning, all you're gonna need is some Dawn and water and a soft bristled brush like you would clean your truck with. Just lightly go over all this foam and then you can just wash everything off with a hose and it comes off very easily. Do not use a pressure washer unless it is a very, 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 very low pressurized pressure washer. End of the day, this stuff is still foam, okay? How durable is it? I get that question a lot. It's durable unless you treat it like crap. I mean, you just, common sense. This stuff doesn't really stain as long as you get the stuff out quick. When we were at the TEC, Mike caught the drone, the drone went haywire, completely cut off the top of his finger and he's bleeding all over that ortho deck on the pontoon boat. All I did was quickly get a grab a bottle of water, wash down the deck, and there's no more blood on the deck. So if you take care of it right away, you won't have to worry about it later. For you guys that hunt out of your boat, whether that's deer hunting, duck hunting, uh, bow fishing, uh, if you get a lot of blood on the deck, just make sure you clean it that day. Don't let your boat sit out in the sun and cook all of that disgustingness into your foam. Probably not going to come out after you do. If you take all that into consideration while you're doing your install, you should be good to go. Just take your time, plan things out a little bit, and make sure that you're trying to line up all your cut grooves through all your different height variations. Bow plate, down to your front deck, down to your step, down to your cockpit. You just want to make sure that overall everything looks straight and lined up. Now if you want to go extra fancy and put a little bit of bling bling on your boat, 
EVA Foam Turf is a customization option that we offer at both of our Tiny Boat Nation locations here at the Southeast Store in Georgia and also at our Midwest Store in Illinois. Now we offer a complete line of Sea Deck and Marine Mat and we can do it all custom just like this in a bunch of different options. You can get custom logos put in it, you can get different designs done, any colors that you want fish rulers, a whole bunch of different stuff. But before we can get it to looking like this, there's a whole process that has to happen. So let's walk you through the process on this boat we're working on now. So usually when we start a new custom turf job, the boats come in looking like this, or we've already built the boat and we stop at this stage right here. The paint's already done, the decking's been installed, the lids and latches are installed. Basically anything that the turf needs to go around is already put into the boat so that we can do what we call a custom scan. So this little very expensive device is our scanner and this is what we use to make a 3D model of your boat. We're gonna scan everything on the inside that you wanna have turf and then we will make a 3D model of it and have it custom CNC routed. Now, in order for us to scan your boat, we actually need your boat physically here so that we can use our scanner. We do have the option to be a little bit mobile with this. We can take it outside, but we don't do a lot of traveling because we have to stay here at the shop. Now, if you're remote or a long way away from us, we can send you a clear plastic Mylar template that you can trace the template of your boat out, send it to us, and we can scan that actual Mylar template if you want. And for that service, you just need to contact your nearest store and they can walk you through that process. So typical turnaround time after we scan the boat is about four to six weeks for a what we call an in stock turf color. This is going to be your normal turf colors like brown and tan, black and gray, blue and black, things like that. If you're getting some wild crazy color combination, those have to be custom laminated and they can take quite a bit longer, usually around 12 weeks minimum. After the scan is complete and we do your design, you'll get a proof that looks something like this. It's basically just a layout of the pieces of turf and how they would look in your boat. Once the turf arrives, you have two different options. One, you can come pick it up from us or we can ship it to you and you can install it yourself. It's pretty simple, just like a big Lisa Frank sticker book, peel and stick. And they will even print out the instructions just like this. So all you gotta do is basically lay this out in front of your boat and peel and stick away. Your other option is to bring it to us and have us install it for you whichever you prefer. So we'll go ahead and walk you guys through the scan process so you can see that. How long does it normally take to scan a boat? Uh, depending on the boat, I can usually get them done in an hour and a half, two, two and a half hours, somewhere in that range. It just depends on how many surfaces we're scanning. That is only if we do our part right. If I screw up at any point during the scan and mismeasure something, I gotta delete it and start the whole thing over. I've only done that the hard way a few times. Say I come get my boat scanned and then two years later I get different sponsors or I want to change my design or anything. Oh, that's easy. And that's one of the best parts of having a scan boat is when we scan it, we keep these scans forever. We don't ever get rid of them. So let's just say you had, uh, you know, like a logo here on your live well lid and then next year you decide you want to change up or you damage just that one little piece of your live well lid. All you gotta do is call us up and say, hey, I need a new live well lid and we can cut you just that piece. So instead of having to pay for a whole new turf job, you can just replace the pieces that get damaged or anything that you want to change. Super simple. If I'm bringing my boat to you to get scanned, do I need to take anything off or remove anything from the boat or anything like that? Like I had carpet on mine before. Anything that you can remove that will be in our way, like outboards and stuff, does help. But if it's too big of a pain in the butt to move it, it's no big deal. You can leave it. We'll just work around it. it may take us a little bit longer. As far as carpet goes, if you previously had carpet in your boat and you're now wanting to switch to turf, you're going to need to remove all of the carpet first so that we can take a look at the actual surface and not where the carpet was covering. That way we can get an accurate scan of your boat. One other thing that you'll need to keep in mind if you're going from carpet to turf is you're gonna have to paint or use some type of covering or coating to fix all of the areas where the turf is not gonna be covering. Turf is not like carpet. You don't cover every single surface in it. Usually your flat surfaces and maybe a few vertical surfaces here and there. But uh, as far as like wrapping around 90 degree corners like this, we would only do the flat part of this deck right here. And this would need to be painted if it previously had carpet on it. Or you can do our favorite option, which is using a monster liner coating, which we have a video on that. You can go check it out up 
one of these places up here. I can't remember where. And some of these places like up inside here, they can be a little bit difficult to scan because of the size of the scanner getting them up in there. We can actually just take them and make rectangles and squares that are whatever size we need. So that's what I'm recording measurements for right now. So now my entire 3D scan of this boat is done. I can go ahead and get it ready to send off. Get to cutting on the turf. So I hope you learned something about turf. If you have any questions at all, feel free to leave them down in the comment section below. If you'd like to actually talk to a human being on the phone, you can do that. Our phone number is also down there and we're on the Googles and the Facebooks and all that kind of stuff. You can look us up. We'll be glad to answer any questions that you have. Yay, turf. It comes to cleaning, this stuff is extremely easy. <laughs> wow. I, did, I could just see it on my, I was trying to look at the camera and... I'm trying to do it like this. Should we practice this first? Yeah, try it real quick. Oh, 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 cleaning. 